friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Kristen, this is Intentional Living, and today we are doing a slightly different video. I'm going to be doing a net worth update because I haven't done one since December 2022, and I'm wanting to reprioritize a few financial goals, and so I wanted to get an update of how, where I'm at from a net worth perspective and see how much progress we've made. So, this sheet here shows the last time I reviewed, and I think I'm going to put this down. It's going to affect the lighting, so I'm sorry, but um, okay, so this was December um, when I did this last. It was on the 30th, and the uh, my cash envelopes were at 4220 My sinking funds were at 21190 My emergency fund was at 5030 my car was worth six thousand seven hundred and fifty. My um, old retirement plan for my last job had twenty three thousand dollars in it. My Roth IRA had eight thousand dollars in it, and then my new um, employment retirement fund has four thousand two hundred eighty six dollars for a total net worth of seventy two thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars, which was an increase from the month before that, November, when I used to track this every month. So. For August, this, I took these numbers down on the 31st. It's September 5th today, but I all these numbers were as of the 31st. So what we're gonna do is just kind of compare, see where we're at, and then I'll talk you through my financial goals moving forward. Um, so my cash envelopes are at 1,015, which was a decrease of a good amount because they used to be at 4,000, um, but that's all good. Um, I moved some sinking funds versus cash envelopes around since then. Sinking funds are at 17605 which also went down, but that's because I moved some money to my emergency fund. So my emergency fund, you'll see, went up to 10350 which is over $5,000 or $5,000 of a jump. Um, so $5,300-ish went up in emergency fund, and that's just because I took it out of sinking funds and put it in emergency fund. My car went down in worth. Um, it, it's 6575 according to Credit Karma right now which is about $200 less than what it was worth at the end of December, which makes sense given um, like used cars aren't as valuable as they used to be, which is fine because I'm not planning to sell it. Um, and then all of my investment accounts have gone up. So in my old job, it went from 23,000 basically to 26,000. So that's like the power of passive income because I've not been adding to that, but it's increased $3,000 just since December. Um, my Roth IRA went from about $8,000 in December to about $14,000, and that is from passive income, but also I have been investing in my Roth IRA. Um, that hadn't gone up as much as I thought it was, and that made me realize that I hadn't been investing some of the money, like some of the earned monies and the money I'd been contributing. So I did invest all of that, so hopefully I'll see that rise a bit more now. So note to self-check that every month. <laughs> And then my Roth for my current job is at 8,700 and it ended last year at 4,000. So that is also increasing really well. And then I decided to track what my business with intentional living is worth. And I basically just added up my um, funds that weren't taxes or bills because I do have to pay taxes. Even if my, if my business went under today, I'd still have to pay those taxes and I'd still have to finish out my bills. So 6,000 is what it's worth without all of that. So let's count it and see what my net worth is as of the end of August, 2023. I just kind of wanted to do this just to see. Um, plus I know some of y'all were sad when I stopped doing this, but I just didn't feel like filming it every month anymore. Um, but it is good to kind of check in on. So we are doing that today. So my grand total net worth is, wow, 90957 and I don't have any debt. If you're new to my channel, I paid off all my debt. There's so many debt payoff videos in my past, so you can scroll back and find those. Um, but wow, we're almost at $100,000 net worth. Um, so let's see what the change from last time is. We started at $72,980. <laughs> So that is an increase of $17,977, which is a increase of 
24.63%. And obviously that is over eight months, but still that is huge. So 17,977 divided by eight months, that means my net worth was increasing over $2,000 a month, which is wild because I make only slightly more than that in my full-time job per month. So again, most of that is coming from these three accounts right here from passive income being built. So that is my um, net worth update. I hope you enjoyed that. And now next we're going to talk about some of my financial goals. So I really want to um, get serious about potentially becoming self-employed. And so I wanted to just look at my basic living expenses if I were to work for myself. So I would still have to pay rent, which is eight twenty five dollars for me. Um, my utilities end up being around $140 a month, so I rounded it up to $150 just to be safe. My phone bill is $60 a month. I should be adding these. Giving, I give $30 a month. My insurances are right now around $95, so I just rounded up to $100 to have some buffer. My gym, I rounded up to $100 a month. Roth IRA to max it out, I'd have to contribute about $540 a month. So I'm going to just assume that that's a bill and I'm planning to max out my Roth. Um, gas for my car is about $100. That's rounding up. Groceries is $400. Again, rounding up. Um, and I didn't budget for eating out because I figured $400 a month would be for groceries and eating out. So really, this is just like food. $80 a month for household expenses like toilet paper, things like that. $20 a month for toiletries. 150 for spending so that is self-care that is coffee that is clothes that is everything so if I were to pull it all back how much do I want to spend a month or could I spend a month I put 150 just for some wiggle room birthdays and holidays I put 50 a month savings 600 a month which includes things like car vacation travel um future house stuff like that and then intentional living bills is 150. So in total, that is $3,355 for one month. So what I want to do is in my emergency fund, I want, I can't decide if I want to do one month. I think I want to start with one. I don't know. Emergency fund, I'm like, I kind of want more than one month to start. Um, Okay, in summary, I have over $10,000 in my emergency fund. I'm wanting to split some of that money up for another thing that I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so I'm trying to determine how much to leave in my emergency fund. And part of me is like, I should just leave 3,000. Um, but I'm like, realistically to find a new job, I would probably need more than one month. So then I'm like, let's do two months. And then I'm like, what about just $5,000 flat? Cause two months would be like, over 6,000 and this is with a lot of buffer like savings, Christmas, holidays, that kind of stuff. So I'm thinking maybe my emergency fund, I should leave $5,000 for like true emergencies or I lose my job unexpectedly. Um, so that's what I'm thinking I'm gonna have this new balance be, which is funny because that's what my old balance was. <laughs> but it, that's because I wanted to build up this three to six month uh, months of expenses, which would be if I use this number, which is like, not living super frivol frivolously. It's like, I still go to the gym, I still give, I still, you know, max out my Roth IRA, I still have spending money, I still whatever. Like it's a very like, not a bare bones budget. I wanted to have three to six months. So I have three months now with 10,000 cause I have over 10,000, but six months would be 20,000. So that is why I moved that money around. But now that I'm thinking about like, okay, how do I set myself up to be self-employed one day? The main thing I'm hearing is that you should save three to six months of expenses for a FU fund, which I'm not going to say because I don't want to get demonetized, but um, that's kind of like in the finance world, what they call it. It's the FU fund. Um, I'm going to, so this fund, the purpose of it is so that you can go up to your boss, say F you quit and you're fine. Like you aren't, you are financially able to do that and you have that freedom to be able to say F you and walk away. Um, but I really like where I work and like my boss. So instead of calling it an F you fund, I'm going to call it a walk away fund. So this fund would basically allow me to be financially stable enough to to walk away from a full-time job 
and to start being self-employed. So for me, I want that to be this three to six months. And they also, some people recommend going as far as 12 months. And I just don't feel like I need that because I'm like within three months, I could easily find a full-time job working for someone else if I needed to. So three to six months feels very appropriate to me. So I would say my walk away fund should be 10 to 20 K. And this is really just to set me up to feel comfortable leaving a full-time job, working for someone else to be able to work for myself. So you'll be seeing a walk away fund in my next video for stuffing purposes. Um, so that's one change. I'm going to be adding this. So when you see walk away fund, that's what it's for. I'll probably explain it in my next video too, but I wanted to kind of talk to you about that and why I'm going to pull money from my emergency fund and put it towards my walk away fund. So that's that minimum of 10 up to 20 is what I'm thinking because these just feel like astronomical to me and I just don't think I need it because I'm a hard worker. I'm very employable. So like, I don't, I don't see myself going a year without a job unless there's a big recession. Um, and if that's the case, I'll be pulling back on a lot of these, right? Like I'm not going to be doing $150 a month in spending on random things. I'll probably not be saving $600. Like I can pull back there to be able to extend from instead of six months of this type of living, I could extend this to probably nine months of living if I like pull back to a bare bones budget. So that is how I'm going to be doing that. Um, and then, so to be self-employed though, I have to consider some other expenses. So I have really great medical vision, dental insurance and a retirement match with my current company. So, um, I would be giving up this 3%. So I would need to put 3% additional towards retirement to like have equal benefits to what I have now. Vision and dental, um, I would also um, need to pay for. So I estimated about a hundred dollars a month for that and for medical around 300. Um, and this is not assuming that I go and get my own insurance. Cause I know this can be a lot more expensive if you're just getting your own insurance, but this is like assuming I can get on my boyfriend's, um, insurance as a, um, partner, like a domestic partner because it's a little cheaper. So this is basically an extra, This match is about 1,650 a year. So let's see, $140 a month. So these are all per month. So in total, this would look like five forty of additional monthly expenses that I would have to pay. Um, so that would make this number actually closer to 4,000. So this would be $3,895 per month. And I say this to say, because this is what I would want to make with, with my self-employment per month to be able to live, um, and preferably more than that. So, um, if I want to keep up a similar standard of living, if I want to, um, you know, be able to pay obviously for insurance and none of this doesn't even include like disability, life insurance, any of that, it just includes the basics. I would need to make ideally like 4,000 a month or more to make it worth it. And so let's call it 4,000 times 12 months. This would mean I would want to make about 48,000 per year working for myself to like make it worth it to leave my current job. Obviously, hopefully I would be making more than that. Um, you know, this doesn't include how much I put towards my own This only includes Roth. It doesn't include other retirement. So I'm going to add that in really quick. Okay. I currently put around 680, let's call it $688 or 690 just to keep it even or 
is what I put towards retirement from my full-time job currently. So really that's 540 plus 690. It's really closer to 1200 plus the 3355. So I take it back. This is actually much higher if we're taking into consideration all expenses. And that would be closer to 55,000 a year, which is funny because this is almost exactly what I make in my full-time job. So I would basically need to make what I make in my full-time job a year to make it worth it, which makes sense, right? Um, so this would be a slightly smaller standard of living than I usually, I usually save a lot more and spend a lot more. Um, but still, to not drastically change my life, this is what I would need to make. So that's for me to consider as I'm thinking about expanding my business, thinking about like things I want to add, um, offerings I want to provide, services I want to provide. Just thinking about this as like a general number is going to be important as I consider YouTube, Etsy revenue, and then potentially some new forms of revenue for my business. So, and I don't need to make this right away when I'm self-employed, but I do would love to creep close to this before I then quit my full-time job. So now that I have this number in mind, this is like a, as I creep close to this, I'll feel confident about leaving. And as I have this money in the bank, I'll feel more comfortable leaving again and potentially working for myself. So that is all I have for this video. I just was going to do some of this off campus and I figured off camp off camera and I figured that I would just share it with y'all and film it. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. Um, but I'll catch you in my August or no, my September cash stuffings that are coming next. And you'll see my new walk away fund in those. So I'll see you there.